Let's briefly consider inductive reactants. We know that for um, a typical coil or inductor that the voltage that's induced across the coil is equal to its inductance times the rate of change of the current. So let's say that this is hooked up to an alternating source of voltage so that the voltage drop across here or the, not the voltage drop, but the voltage induced across the coil will also be a sinusoidal wave or a, or a cosine wave. Um, one of the two, of course. Let's say that it's a cosine wave. So we would say then that L D I D T will equal that voltage induced across the coil, and that will have an expression like this then, EM times the cosine of omega t. And we want to know if this is the voltage that's induced across the coil, what will be the current? So we would have to multiply both sides by dt and divide by L to get this kind of an expression, di equals EM divided by L times the cosine of omega T DT. And now we integrate to find out, to get expression for I, the current. These two are constants, so they can be outside of the integral. So we have a pretty simple setup here. Uh, we won't put limits on these integrals. We'll deal with that in a moment. And here we would have I plus a constant of integration. We'll take care of that in a moment. But that will be equal to, this is these two constants, EM divided by L. And then the integral of the cosine is plus the sine. We're going to have 1 over omega. And it's times the sine of omega t. And this one will have a constant of integration, and this one will have an arbitrary constant of integration. We can combine them together into a single arbitrary constant of integration. So this would be an expression for the current for the, uh, that is associated with our inductor. So we see that, first of all, if the voltage, the induced voltage that the inducer is producing is a cosine wave, we see that the current is a sine wave. Now this value k for our arbitrary constant of integration, we know at time t equals zero, there is no current. So when t equals zero, we know then that i equals zero. Well when t equals zero, the sine of zero is zero, and this is zero, so we have zero equals zero plus k. So our arbitrary constant turns out just to be zero. So we can get rid of this, we don't need that. We just prove that it's equal to zero. So here then is the current. So the voltage induced across the inductor was this, then the current is this. So again, we're looking at here where the voltage is a cosine wave, the current is a sine wave. And here's where we recall from trigonometry that the cosine of some angle theta minus 90 degrees, that is equal to the cosine of theta times the cosine of 90 degrees. And if this is a minus sign here, it's a plus sign over here, plus the sine of theta times the sine of 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0. The sine of 90 degrees, that's 1. So this is just, just times 1, so we don't have to have this here. 
So the sine of theta is the same thing as the cosine of theta minus 90 degrees. So we could say the current equals EM divided by omega L and the sine of omega t, that is the same thing as the cosine of omega t minus 90 degrees. So let me get rid of this now. So this is omega times L. So we see that here the induced voltage for a coil was a cosine wave. The current is that cosine wave minus 90 degrees. So the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. So for an inductor, the current lags the voltage. by 90 degrees. Now, if this was a sine wave instead of a cosine wave, we get the same relationship. The current will be lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. And perhaps we shouldn't be surprised by that because let's just consider a real simple, even just a direct current circuit. Suppose we have a battery here. and a resistor and here's our inductor and then suppose at time t equals zero we throw a switch so this becomes a complete circuit now the voltage that's induced across the coil as we talked about in our videos earlier in this series that's this expression Now, and here's a resistor R, here's our coil, and with time t equals zero, we complete the circuit. Instantly after that, say at time t equal zero plus, there'll be such a faint trickle of current that the current going through the resistor is so tiny we can ignore it. So there's no really no voltage drop across here. Now what about here? Well the induced voltage, notice it does not depend upon the magnitude of the current. It depends upon the instantaneous rate of change of the current. So initially it was zero and now it's still extremely small, but extremely small is larger than zero. So what it depends upon is not the magnitude of the current, but its rate of change. So if we say had it something like this, where this is time and this is current, this might be say in milliseconds. So right after we throw the switch, say like a millisecond afterwards, the current might be very small. This just might be maybe 10 to the minus 6 amps, say, a very, very small current. But what depends is here is how fast this current rises. If it just goes very slow like this, then that's going to be a small number. On the other hand, if the rate of change is very large, say almost like this, almost going straight up, where this would be infinitely fast, and this rate of change here would be extremely large, then we could generate a extremely large voltage because our rate of change is so large. So the point is that the voltage that is induced across the coil doesn't depend on the magnitude of the current, just on the rate of change. So when we first make the connection, immediately afterwards, while the current is still very, very small, there's a voltage induced across there then of course the current builds up to its normal value. But the po point then is that we can see how the voltage would lead the current then.
because all you need is a very small amount of current, because it only depends on the rate of change, to generate a voltage. So it, we look at it from that perspective, and hopefully it's easy to understand why the voltage leads the current, or we just state it a different way, the current legs behind the voltage by 90 degrees. Here we were trying to give uh, an intuitive reasoning for that. Here we can see it right by the mathematics that's involved. So at any rate, if the induced voltage is say this, that's our induced voltage for the inductor, then the current for the inductor is this times the sine of omega t. And of course this is our maximum voltage right here times the cosine of omega t. This is how we've been writing our alternating currents and our alternating voltage expressions in our previous videos. But let's go to here and let's ask the question, what would be the maximum current that we could have? Of course, the maximum value this can have is 1. So the maximum current, I max, I L max, that's just the maximum voltage divided by omega times L. And of course we're used to thinking of current as being a voltage divided by a resistance. So for the inductor this sort of this expression omega L plays the role of a resistance factor. So omega L that is the inductive reactance. And this is where it comes from, just by doing this kind of a simple analysis. So again, with the uh, inductor, the current legs behind the voltage by 90 degrees, or conversely, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees, either way, and omega L, that is the inductive reactance. So I think that's it for this video. I guess this is video number 80 now in our um, electrical circuit series. And you can find the playlist for all the uh, videos is at the uh, website digital-university.org.